Welcome to Hagsby Shed. This is the screw cutting gearbox on my Harrison 140 lathe. And you can see that it's got a number of grease nipples here, five of them actually. But that they're not for grease, they're for oil. And you'll really mess it up if you grease them. They're quite fiddly to use. A grease gun fitting will clip onto the nipple. But I found that the grease guns, if I put oil in them, they tend to leak oil all over the place. If I use an oil gun and just a cup on the end, when I try to push the oil end through this nipple, it doesn't seal. So I'm looking for a way to have an oiler system. It would have been much better if this ran in oil, but that's, it doesn't, so that's the end of that. On eBay, I've bought five of these connection fittings. They take a four millimeter tube and they have an olive inside. I think they were a pound each. They came from China, fast pack, and they arrived pretty quickly, faster than I expected. You can see here the copper tube that I plan to use and the olive there. Well, we're 24 hours further on and having thought about this overnight, I realized that plan A is in the bin because this has a four millimetre hole through it and that's not going to give me enough meat to thread that as quarter width width. The walls would be too thin. So I need to come up with a new idea. I have a number of these offset quarter width with grease nipples and I'm going to see if I can make this into a thread adapter somehow. I'm just prototyping at the moment but being careful because I don't have any spares of these. And what I've done is I've taken the angled grease nipple with the quarter width with thread and I've machined a peg on it and that's a six millimeter peg and then I've reamed, drilled and reamed out a six millimeter hole in the end of this brass union. So let's look at how they go together. I'll try and keep it on camera, it's very difficult with the zoom. Can you see that? Now I could press that in if I wanted. So I need to refine this design a bit. Oops, there we are. Um, but that, that might be the idea. So as I say, it's just a prototype, but I think that might be the basis of a solution. That's all five of those made. Five production models plus the one prototype. So now I'm going to try pressing one of them into the brass fitting and I'll put a bit of Loctite on first. It's a bit comical to use the press on a little job like this, but it gives me a little bit more control. Let's see how we get on. Oh, there we go. Now to machine the other brass fittings, the other four. That's all five done, ready for the next stage. I made those fittings back in November of 2020. I think at the time I just needed something to do. But as it's turned out, technically it's okay, but practically speaking it's too elaborate and I really need something much simpler. So on to plan B. This time I've decided to make some simple oilers. And as usual, I've looked for parts that I can adapt. Five aluminium quarter Whitworth screws with knurled heads were about five pounds. And then 20 of these oilers were about the same, about five pounds delivered. So it's just a case of machining out that knurled head and pressing in the oiler insert. And then I'll cut the thread short and drill a hole all the way through, times five. I'm going to hold the screws in my ER32 collet chuck. One of the things about the ER32 collets is that they need quite a length to the work. They don't work, they won't grip properly if you've only got a short piece of work in there. Whereas I think the 5C collets would be okay. So that's a difference between the two, I believe. And I'm going to use this homemade drawbar. Give me one moment while I zoom out. And all it is, is a piece of threaded bar, 12 millimeter, with a sleeve on, 
and then a scooter wheel on the end. The Eulers are 8mm diameter by 8mm long, so I'm going to use a 5 16 reamer and that should give me about a 7th hour interference fit. Next, a 2mm drill to a depth of 20mm. Just on what I was saying about the ER32 collet clamping, this is a 7mm collet, and you can see where the jaws are, and so you need a piece of work at least the length of the jaws there, which means about to where my finger ends there. Now on the larger collets, I believe the work has to extend all the way to the back. I've just test fit that. I drilled it out with a 1964 drill or 7.5 millimeter and then I reamed it. I think that's going to be fine. Now let's see if it will press in. Without squashing. There we are. I didn't want to put it in too deeply because it's only aluminium and very soft and I didn't want to wind the head off. And also you saw me put this larger diameter into actually a 12mm ER32 and as I explained they don't grip very well on sharp pieces and uh, it was very difficult to get that to grip. So uh, I went against my own advice but that was because I'd already drilled this through with the 2mm and I was a bit worried that I would wind the head off so I'm actually going to, as I do the others, drill the 2mm at the very end. Okay, so all I need to do now is to cut this about there where my thumb is, somewhere like that, uh, and we can try it in. That's the first oiler in place. It will also screw into this recess very easily. I've discovered through experience that it doesn't take much pressure to feed the oil into these points on the gearbox. Although it had grease nipples fitted before and that gives the impression that somehow the oil has to be forced in under pressure. It, just an oil can is fine and the oil goes in easily. There you are, see the oil coming out of there. So what's going to happen to these fittings? Well I've got a project for them. I've sent up to China for a cheap gear pump and I plan to set up a pressure oil feed to my spindle bearings. But that's to come in the future. I hope this was useful to you. Thank you for watching Hacks Be Shared.